What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Pomerization. You know what we do, guys? You know what, guys? I'm going to do a little something different. Um, I think we're all kind of just stuck in this virus. and You know, it. there's no competitive scene unless you want to count online stuff. So, like, I've actually been slowly, you know, playing GOAT format. And you know what? I love it. I mean, it's simple. It's not too hard. If you're somebody that's trying to come back into Yu-Gi-Oh!, and, you know, we got all this, you know, like I said, the virus stuff. You can't do nothing. Or if you got friends, family, or even loved ones, you know, you want to get them into the game, I highly recommend getting them into GOAT format. They can learn the basics. You know, that's really the best thing about this game. If you go to GOAT format, you can start from the basics, you know, from just spell cards, trap cards, normal summon. You know, the whole concept of how the game does and then you can slowly reach them up to like different aspects, you know, like we go on the Synchro, XZ. I don't want to say Pendulum. I mean, I'm not a fan of Pendulum, so we can skip Pendulum. Nobody likes them. But, you know what, guys? I want to show you my GOAT deck, pro da -da -da -da. deck profile. Woo! Sorry about that. But you know what, guys, I hope you enjoy it. And you know what, if you ain't subscribed to my channel, you know, and you ain't being one of my fellow materials, you know, that we can fuse together and make this channel amazing, you know what, guys, I highly recommend hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified anytime I have, like, new stuff that comes out and everything. You know what, guys, I'm getting close to 100, so help me get to 100, guys. I love you guys. But you know what, let's go on that deck profile, and I hope you like it, guys. Yeah. All right, everybody, let's get into that GOAT deck, pro deck profile. You know, just our fun, it is GOAT. We're going to show off the pretty little GOAT tokens. Ain't it beautiful? I mean, it wouldn't be GOAT without the tokens. It's amazing. You got to love it. Just got to show it off for fun. But you know, guys, let's go right into the deck profile. If you haven't noticed by the title, mine is more like a warrior stun control, which I love. We're going to start off with the monsters. I do run Marauding Captain. Now, Marauding Captain is really good. Uh, if you had noticed, this is real pretty. These are actually Hobby Leagues. Really beautiful. I tried maxing the rarity out the best I could. But, you know what? It's still great. But Marauding Captain is awesome because everything's warrior. Uh, but for him, you know, he just gets an extra summon. And then if the other monster gets destroyed, you can trip it off and keep going, which is amazing in my opinion. Next monster we go by is DD Warrior Lady. Uh, this card's really good, especially back in the GOAT. You see these in a lot of GOAT decks, I do believe. If you're also wondering, too, about my GOAT deck also, you will have to notice that I'm going by the oldest GOAT format there is, which is April 2005 ban list. I will have this put up here in the top so everybody will know. It's really good. I mean, it's got a good 15, uh, 1,500 attack power. If you almost know, it is also Hobby League. Really beautiful. But the best part, you know, a lot of this stuff I banish to get rid of problematic cards. Usually, even if I can't attack over it and kill it, uh, I'll just banish it. So, it's really great. Speaking of banishing, we also do DD Assailant. I actually run two of these. Same thing, you know, it's great for, like, you know, banishing stuff, even if this is destroyed by battle. Uh, you know, in a 1700 attack back in Go format, ain't nothing to laugh about. So, it's really nice. Another warrior I'm actually doing is Exiled Force. It's a great card. You just tribute it away, and then you just pop the destroy monster on the board. Once again, Hobby League. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Another one I run for is Don Zolom. This guy's really good. It's kind of it's kind of weird. You have to really put damage on the board on your opponent for use his effects, but I, he comes up where he's really useful, especially if I want to minimize my opponent's hand or minimize their deck. It comes in a real clutch moments. Another warrior I'm doing for fun is Blade Knight. I like Blade Knight for the fact because if it gets a late game, it's the last card I have in hand. I've used up so many resources. He gets a little better, so that's the reason I run Blade Knight. I run one Goblin Attack Force. I love because fact it's a normal summon and a 2300. I mean, that is unheard of. I mean, it can beat over anything. Even certain tributes and fusion monsters in good format. You can still attack over with just this normal summon Goblin Attack Force. Granted, it does go in defense position, which does suck after attacks, but you'll see later in my trap and spell lineup, it actually, I can protect it in certain situations, so I can go back next turn and attack again for twice. I do run one Panther Warrior. Panther Warrior, I just did it because it's Panther Warrior. It's beautiful. It's a secret rare. I just think it's beautiful to have. Granted, you do have to tribute a monster, you know, to do it, 
But I do use uh, Scapegoat in this deck if you have no with the tokens. So like it does come up where I can just go Panther Warrior Tribute Attack. And for a 2,000 attack, even if I don't attack and I have something like a wall somewhat, it's still a great card. That's pretty much all the Warriors. We're going to the other cards I run for just, you know, the reasons how good they are. I do run two Gravekeeper Spies. This card's really good because, for one, it has a 2,000 booty. So when you set this card in GOAT format, they attack it. It flips it. And it's a flip effect, so you get to special on another one. And if I can't get over to 2,000, you got two monsters with 2,000 uh, big booty on them. So then next turn, if you got something to tribute, you can just tribute away. It's really great. It, help, it helps minimize your deck as well. Another card a lot of people have problems with is Spirit Reaper. I put Spirit Reaper in here just because even though it's a weak attack, weak defense, it cannot be destroyed by battle. And the best part is, like, I will just set this card a lot of times, and when I attack it, I just have a wall until, like, I draw what I need, and then I can just go from there. Another fun card I run for fun is Sangin. Um, I don't really care much for Sangin, but I have one laying around. I had to finish the deck a little bit. So I got Sangin. It is a secret rare, which is really beautiful. And, you know, I can search out a lot of my monsters in here. They have a low 1500 attack list. So he does come up every once in a while. And just for nostalgia purposes, I am running that one Karibo. I mean, there's nothing like Karibo. Yeah, sorry. Tongue twister today. There's nothing better than nostalgia when you run a Karibo on your opponent when they attack you and you just take no damage. I mean, that's if you ever watched the anime of Yu-Gi-Oh! when it first came out, Karibo was always like that little thing on his shoulder on Yami and Yu-Gi's shoulder all the time, always talking to him. So for no nostalgia purposes, I just run it. And it's so cute. Even if it's an old art, it's still so cute. The only two tributes I run, one is Total Defense Shogun. Uh, he is a warrior, but I love by him the most is you can put him in defense position with a 2500 butt, and you can still attack with him when he's in defense, which is really amazing, and he's really just, the artwork of the old school is just, it's amazing, I just love it. The last tribute I do is I run Jinzo. Uh, Jinzo is just a win most times, especially in most GOAT decks. Uh, you can just stop your opponent, especially if you got stun control and stuff like that. You tribute make Jinzo, your opponent just can't out this because they can't play traps. And if you haven't noticed, this is actually the anniversary edition, which is really beautiful. It was hard to come by, but you know what? It's amazing. I love it. Going into the spells, of course, you know the tokens we had. We run three scapegoats. I love scapegoat, man. <laughs> this is the funnest thing in goat format. Now, currently, you know, in the meta right now, scapegoats at one. Most people don't really run this no more because it's at one. People don't worry about it. Um, but one thing I would say I would love to have, I wish I had Metamorphosis in my deck. Those are so hard to come by. I mean, they're even at one in good condition. So that's the hardest thing. That's probably one of the two spells I would love to add to this deck just to have Metamor Metamorphosis. Currently, I do not have in this deck, but I think I will eventually. We're running so many warriors. I am doing double Rota, Reinforcement of the Army. It just helps thin the deck, get what you need. It's an amazing card. I also run two Nobleman of the Crossout. This card is so good in so many ways. Like, if your opponent is one of those that rely on flip summons, where it'd be like the Cyber Jars or Magician of Faith or even Man Ear Bug, you know, you can just hit them with the Nobleman of Crossout, get rid of all their copies of that card. It's an amazing card. I love it. I run two Creature Swaps. Creature Swap, I would say. It's probably the most annoying card for my opponents most of the time. Like, I usually, if I have my tokens, I just give them a token and I take their monster, which is quite funny, I think. I do run one Premature Barrel. I like Premature Barrel for the fact, like, you know, even though if I'm paid 800, it's GOAT. It's not like I'm on get OTK'd or nothing like that. So this is actually a really great card. I love this card. It, I don't know. It's just something about this card. Just the artwork, man. I mean, just look at that old school artwork. It ain't just beautiful. Gotta love it. Uh, United We Stand. I, I run one of it just because I can boost any monster. So I ain't got to worry about my warriors being too weak. I could use this, bump them up even bigger. I run one Ding Lincoln Duo. This card just makes my opponent so salty because I rip one out of their hand. Then they got to rip one by themselves. So it's a minus two for your opponent, which I have no problem doing. It make them lose resources. It makes them harder to come back in the game. 
And you know what? One MST, guys. You know, MST negates. So <laughs> we're going to go out there and just pop macro cards. I love this card so much. If you haven't noticed through all my magic and well, spell cards, sorry, most of my spell cards have magic sent on them. So I'm trying to keep it as goat as I can keep it. It's kind of hard getting them all magic. Going to the draw engine with the spells, I run one graceful charity and one pot of greed. That's right, it's goat. We gotta run pot of greed. Um, granted, the pot of greed it is not say magic, it says spell, but you know it's beautiful. I actually have an ulti, but I'll never play the ulti. I'll just keep it put away. But I had a secret laying around. So that's really amazing. And Grace for Charity is just so good. You know, you could actually dis, uh, draw three cards and discard two. Get rid of cards you don't really need or can't use at the moment. So it comes in handy a lot. Um, I would say maybe somewhere in this deck, if I do, I might run Magician to Faith to replace certain cards. Um, I might order them just to have some pretty ones to go with this deck. Because with Magician to Faith, you can just add these back and just keep drawing. So that's something else I'd probably change a little bit in this deck. Now going into the traps, more draw power, I do run the double jar of greed. I mean, this game is slow enough that you can take your time, set it, draw a card during your opponent's turn, or even do it your turn. Like, say if you set these, your opponent wants MSTU or uh, anything that gets rid of your back row cards, you can just jar greed, draw. I mean, it helps you bait out stuff from your opponent, which is amazing. One card I love the most in Goat, in goat is Sakusa Armor. I actually run three of these. This card, I love this card so much. This card will come in clutch so many times. Most people will always think about Mirror Force more than anything, but I think running three of these is just OP. I mean, this card is just ridiculous. I think if you're going to play GOAT, I highly recommend you playing three of these. At least two. You know, you got to play these. These are just amazing. And like I said, guys, that artwork, the old school Yu-Gi-Oh! It's just, oh, it's just amazing, man. It's just great. I wish we could have cards like that again. I do run one Call of the Haunted. Call of the Haunted is really good because I can bring back, it's kind of like Premature Barrel, except I'm not paying the 800. So I can set this and not worry about too much. I run one Trench Tribute. I like Trench Tribute if I know my opponent's going to try to swing in for a big game or something hit me hard. And even if they summon something I'm worried about, I can just be like, no, get that out of here. So that's really great. And then the last card is Bombless Trap Hole. I like using Bombless mostly if my opponent goes into their own Jinzo, or if they put in BLS, or any other of the big giant monsters, you know. But you know guys, that is my Goat Deck profile, you know, I hope y'all enjoy. We'll put these scapegoats back out here so they can look so pretty and cute in front of y'all. But you know guys, if you ain't subscribed and you ain't following me guys, you know, be one of my fellow materials, join me on this journey, let's fuse together and make this channel guys. You know, I'm almost at 100. You know, spread me out there, guys. I I want to reach that goal. And then, you know, that way I have another goal. I keep reaching and reaching and reaching. And I love you guys. I thank you for everything you do. And you know what, guys? Bye.